Hello and welcome to a video on SIRDS brought to you by the Answer Series. Let us start off by having a look at some laws. The first law says that the nth root of a to the m is equal to the nth root of a to the m. In other words, if I raise something to a power first and then take the root, it's exactly the same as if I take the root first and then raise it to the power. The second one, the nth root of a times the nth root of b is the nth root of ab. So if the roots are the same, they stay the same, and I can multiply the numbers. In exactly the same way with division. If the roots are the same, they stay the same, and I can divide the numbers. And then an important fact, if I've got root x times root x, that is equal to x as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. So root 5 times root 5 is 5. Root 12 times root 12 is 12, and so on. And one very important thing, calculators may not be used in any of these questions. Example number 1. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try and simplify these three examples, and then we'll look at them together. What you've got to do in thirds is you need to know your square numbers very well. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, and so on. So what you do is you think, what square number goes into 75? What's the biggest square number? So it's 25 times 3. 12, a square number that goes into it, it's 4 times 3. The square root of 25 is 5, and I'm left with root 3. The square root of 4 is 2, and I'm left with root 3. 2 times 2 is 4, and then these are like terms. 5 root 3 plus 4 root 3, it's like 5x plus 4x is 9x. This answer is 9 root 3. 1.2, 8, I can write as 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2, and I'm left with root 2. And then remember the square belongs to both of these inside. 3 squared is 9, root 2 squared is 2, and my answer is 18. In 1.3, you will notice my brackets are difference of 2 squares, which means my middle terms cancel out. So all I'm left with is 3 root 2 squared minus root 5 squared. 3 squared, 9. Root 2 squared, 2. Root 5 squared, 5. And I get my answer. What we now need to do is sort out how to rationalize the denominator. Now the denominator of a fraction is the bottom Rationalize means I can't have a third there, so no roots at all. In example number one, I've got a root two on the bottom. I don't want any roots on the bottom at all. I can have a root on the top, but I don't want a root on the denominator. So what I do is I multiply the bottom by root two, because root two times root two is two, and that's no longer irrational. But I cannot multiply the bottom of the fraction by root 2 unless I multiply the top as well. And effectively what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by 1. If I multiply by 1, it doesn't change my number at all. It's just changing the form of the number. So this becomes 5 root 2 over 2. And there, the denominator of my fraction is no longer irrational. What about in number 2? I take the denominator of my fraction and I multiply by what is called the conjugate. So it's the same thing but with the opposite sign. Why is that? It's because then I've got difference of two squares. So then my middle terms will cancel out. So all I'm left with on the bottom is 3 minus 2, which is rational. But I can't multiply the bottom of the fraction unless I multiply the top 
by exactly the same thing. And you'll see, this is multiplying by 1. On the top, I get 1 times root 3 minus root 2, which means my answer is root 3 minus root 2 over 1, which is just root 3 minus root 2. I want you to pause the video and I want you to try these two examples and then we'll look at them together. In 2.1, I multiply the bottom of the fraction by root 3, which means I must multiply the top also by root 3. So I get 6 root 3 over 3 and 3 goes into 6 twice and there the denominator of my fraction has become rational. In 2.2 I multiply by the conjugate, so by the same thing but with the opposite sign, and I multiply the top by the same. So that's what I get on the top. The bottom becomes 7 minus 3, which is 4, and 2 goes into 4 twice. Example number three, you've been given a fraction and you've been asked to determine the values of x for which various things happen. So pause the video, try these, and then we'll look at them together. You want p to be equal to zero. Well, the only way I can get a fraction to be zero is if the top of the fraction is zero. So either x is zero or x is four. If I want p to be undefined, it means I want the bottom of the fraction to be 0. In other words, when x is minus 1. 3.3, I want p to be real. In other words, I cannot have the square root of any negatives. So 4 minus x must be greater than or equal to naught. So x must be less than or equal to 4. And watch that inequality sign x plus 1 also can't be negative and it cannot be 0 because I cannot divide by 0. So x plus 1 must be greater than 0, which means that x must be greater than minus 1. These two must happen at the same time, which means x must be greater than minus 1 and less than or equal to 4. Example number four asks you to determine the area of triangle ABC. So pause the video, try this one, and then we'll look at it together. Notice I have a right angle, which means I can use Pythagoras. So AB squared is equal to AC squared minus BC squared. Root 18, I can write as root nine times two. The square root of 9 is 3, and I'm left with root 2. 3 root 2 minus root 2 is 2 root 2. 2 squared, root 3 squared, 2 squared, root 2 squared. So I get 12 minus 8, which is 4. If AB squared is 4, it means that AB is 2. So this side is 2. I've worked out BC to be 2 root 2, so when I get the area, it's half base times height, which gives me an answer of 2 root 2 units squared. The last question I want to do, you've got a rectangular box with dimensions A, B and C, and they've given you the area of three of the surfaces, and they ask you to calculate the volume. Pause the video, try this, and then we'll look at it together. So what we've got is the following. A times B is 2 root 10. B times C is 3 root 10. 2. And A times C is 6 root 5. So what I can do is the following. I can take AB 
BC and AC, and I can multiply them, and I get A squared, B squared, C squared, which means it's equal to the product of these three. Root 10 I can write as root 2 times root 5. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. And I get that this is equal to 360. Now the volume of a box is length times breadth times height. In other words, A, B, C. Well, if A squared, B squared, C squared is 360, then A, B, C must be the root of 360. And 360 I can write as 36 times 10. The square root of 36 is 6, and I'm left with root 10. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.